computer and share screen. Um, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, can people see my screen? Yeah, it's yeah. just warming up. It's warming up. There it is. The valves are heating up. Okay. <laughs> so, um, okay. Uh, welcome everyone to meeting number two of the archive working group of date is 7th of June. Um, and we have Andre, um, uh, Vanessa and myself and Tommy. Um, and, and uh, well, we're we'll add Tommy when, uh, um, I mean, if we can, we'll add Tommy when we from the meeting records. Um, okay. Um, this meeting is going to comprise, as usual, with a run through the GitHub project board, and then there'll be a practical session from Vanessa in the latter half of the meeting. But I'll just jump straight into the project board. So, um, so just, just keeping an eye on in case anyone is. Um, is joining us. Um, okay, um, so the first thing is the Ambassadors Git book. Um, Vanessa, do you want to talk about this? Hello? Sorry, yeah. Um, to be honest, I don't know that there's that much to say at this stage because I've been focusing on like the workflow and the minimum archivable material this week so we haven't done a lot with the ambassador's git book okay so the status... I, think it's, I think it's also something that my mirror was keen to work on and he's not here so should we just put it in abeyance until next meeting yeah i mean if the, I'm, the way i'm not going to approach this is if there's no substantial updates i'll just leave it as it yeah. was and then move on okay this is nothing okay. happened to that one um Okay, the proposal for the archive work group. Um, this is me. I'll just wait for this to load. Okay, the final version to be budget to archive. I think there's some misunderstanding from my perspective on the budget, which was cleared up um, at the ambassadors working group meeting yesterday. Apparently, um, the ambassadors apportion per month is uh, this figure, 4,200 odd. I believe the apportionment per month for the work group is 2,600 AGX. Um, and uh, these details are recorded, by the way, in the document. There's a link in the proposal to the budget spreadsheet. So uh, what I'm going to do is just to uh, um, pass by the final budget by the Treasury Guild. So um, I'm... And just to check that everything is okay, and uh, to to basically request um, a continuation of the budget um, for the next quarter, um, because we well the way I planned this is currently um, per quarter. So we we got up to we started in April. Uh, we didn't really get paid for April, and we've done May and June. So we're getting paid, uh, as far as I know, um, for May and June. But then we need to continue it on to July, August, and September. Um, so um, um, that's really to to confirm to confirm the next quarter. Um, Budget. It's August. I'll tidy this up later. Are there any comments and questions on that? Yeah, if you're going to um, attend strategy today, I think yeah. last week I put this in for 2% of the budget, uh, whatever the annual, so you can for the next quarter. So, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I think that only comes up to 20, 20 something hundred. So you may want to pay attention to that and ask for an increase. Is that per work group, um, Tommy? 
Is that a general? What's that? Is that a general amount for per work group? No, just uh, just for the only work groups that I'm uh, proposing budgets for is treasury and uh, archival. Okay, which okay, I'm just, so that's approximately how many how many ages do you say? I I think it was like twenty something. What if? It's two percent, so we're getting, uh, I think, sixty, sixty-five thousand a month or something. Okay, so I'm not, I won't put a figure in there. I'll just say two percent of of archive budget for archive work group to be discussed. Do you say strategy gear? Yeah, and I may have increased it to three percent because I I was aware of your sharing the ambassador stipends you get and we're lowering the ambassador amount so i i don't have the budget in front of me that i put in um but it, it'll come up this afternoon in in strategy i may not be able to make that but um i'll, I'll follow up the notes on what you decide i think i can go so at least somebody from our yeah might but, that, there, but i might not be able to answer all the questions anyway Okay, but that will be helpful, Tommy, and we so we get yeah. You know, we just want to, as you know, we've just been doing it by quarter, and if we just could get confirmation of what we're going to get. Yeah, um, I'm really interested in your experiment um, yeah. of not getting paid on a on a hourly. I know, I like, know, it may say you seem masochistic, but we're kind of, it, it, it's basically trying to run it like a a commercial project in a way. Yeah, so to not assume we're getting paid so just to do it by budget and then at the end of each quarter to sort of get the sign off yeah 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 it's an experiment as you say so we see that's great yeah so so if, if it needs to go up to three or, or whatever just raise that vanity uh if you're in the meeting and we'll flesh it out okay i'll leave that that may be vanny who would speak for for us then yeah great Okay, I'll move on. Um, archival work group design, Vanessa, it's over to you. Yeah, so um, I've had a few conversations with people. Tommy, I definitely need to catch a conversation with you about it as well, but we know that, so we'll have to find a time. But what we've got so far is right there. Um, it's basically what we're thinking is that the time limit should be within a week of the date of a meeting. The workshop, the work group facilitator should get the stuff up in the Discord meeting summary channel. And, you know, that kind of allows people who are a little bit slower. But if it's quicker than that, that would be ideal. Um, and obviously, different work groups will collect different things. And I'm also like talking to people about the differences in the different work groups and what they need to collate. Then an archives team member cuts and pastes the material to the archives git book. And that's why it's nice if it's already formatted, because you can just cut and paste it and bang. Um, then this is to be confirmed. This has just come up in conversations. Maybe we as an archives team should develop a taxonomy of tags and should tag posts appropriately, which makes the beginning of a finding aid. I think it'd be useful. And I think it could be also something that the community could have input into. And it would just like be a way of getting people interested in archiving, like what topics are meetings covering and what could our control vocabularies be around that. But it's not a priority. It's just something that we may try and introduce after a bit of conversation. Um, but for the moment, we're not using it. If the archive team, met, this was what we discussed in the last meeting, if the archive team member is aware of any additional material that they can easily get hold of, you know, like if they were in the meeting and they recorded the video or whatever, then they should add it, but they shouldn't actively feel like they need to go searching for more material. So it's just like, you know, it's not like you only have to put on pain of death what the person has posted, but you shouldn't go looking. And then the archive team member must be sure to reply in Discord so that people know that it has been archived. And it's good if, you know, the best way to do that is to give a link to where it is on Gitbook. And then, yeah, it's just, I, I realised we didn't have a process for if there was any corrections needed. And I wonder if we need like a time scale. Like, I don't, I don't know. My feeling is if a correction comes up, then however late it is, it should be corrected. But some people would say, oh, no, no corrections if it's like a month later or whatever. So I just wonder what people think about that. For me, 
the process would be if the work group leader notices that a correction is needed six months down the line, they should still be able to say it and it should still be corrected. Do you want to put it out for questions? Anyone has any questions or about what Vanessa's just presented? Not, yeah, I don't she, know. I oh, always correct a lot. Oh, hi, Steve. Uh, I didn't see you were there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I hope people are letting people in because I can't see the invite screen, but the, uh, yeah. Sorry, what did you say, Tivo? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I changed quite often actually the meeting notes, like a few months later. Mm -hmm. I like type check them and I add links to them. Mm -hmm. And I never really not notify anybody. Just make basically information for me. If I stumble up on then mm -hmm. I have a link to something that gives context faster. See, that's something that we need to find a way to integrate into the archival workflow. So say, like, for example, if you were doing it on a doc and then giving the link to the doc and we were embedding that, then any changes you make to the doc, fine. But, yeah, does it become laborious if you make changes to the information that you posted and then you have to repost it and we have to repost it? I don't know, because I think what you're adding is important, right? Otherwise you wouldn't bother adding it. Yeah, but I feel like it becomes like a spam because it's like <laughs> I'm, I'm working on some context and then I, I kind of document that in my in my way and sometimes it connects with something else that was discussed in a meeting, I don't know, two months mm -hmm. ago. And that's I make the connection, but because I basically switch context like I don't know three four times per day I might update the bar for three four times per day and that would <laughs> be like I think this is like what you and I were talking about in um DMs about how if a person facilitates more than one work group they kind of carry their thinking from one to the next and they make connections I think this is really helpful for Singularity Net because those connections are things that we do need to forge and it gets done through the work group leaders. So I'm just thinking it is important and I wonder if maybe what, say like working particularly with you because of the way that you work, we should say, right, a month from the date of the meeting, let's have your update and we'll change the documentation to reflect that and maybe that's just the way you work and we work differently with other people i think we're small enough that we can work in different ways with different people but that could be an option it could maybe if we work that into the workflow so that it was an automatic thing and andre i wonder if we could automate this in some way to send a notification to remind somebody ah oh, have you changed your documentation have you updated anything if so, post your new version. And yeah. then I just don't know how feasible that is, but I just think if there's information there, it should be in the archive. And if people have done thinking, it should be in there. I have some thought. I mean, I mean I'm not sure Andre wants to comment on that. Uh, yeah, we can look into, um, I think, try a process. First, just see. Uh, this is, uh, well, I think maybe I must just give it some thought as well. Mm. I'm not going to be able to think of something right now. But... Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I was going to add to that. I don't want to preempt some items, following items, which are going to be about how we've, um, Miro and myself, have been doing some of the archive group. Well, sorry, the backlog. Um, um, but on on this workflow as a kind of draft, Vanessa, mm. um, should we then say, um, I just want to raise kind of an action item on this too. Should we transfer it to the Git book as a kind of section in the Git book to say this is our... I think we're still working on it. I've still got a couple of people I need to talk to because I haven't spoken to all the work group leads and they might add insights that I haven't thought of. Okay. So, so maybe we keep it open and we come back to it next meeting and then do that. But yeah. Right, so works in progress, then transfer uh, to the input. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, and I'll put that again to you before and we'll, we can update. Yeah. 
um, the next meeting, next two weeks. So we've got so kind of two weeks there. I'll update that and I'll put, it's just to go through the board really. So, and then yeah, I'll okay. update that to um, next to 21st of June. Okay. okay, going to, um, this one is a bit of a hybrid item because it's kind of crosses over between some work I've done and some work which would be the rest of the work group. And that's the current updates. Um, <clears throat> the only thing I've got to say is I, I, I did some updates last week, but now that's been taken over by the archive work group um, rather than coming out. You know, so um, I, the, I just a, a quick note about the format here. Um, I've been for each month issue. I've been trying to keep to this standard format to say uh, to create a link in in the uh, Git book itself. Um, here's an example here that links back to the issue on the month. So whenever you go to a the reason for this is whenever you go to a month header, you can then go back to the issue to see the status of this month. Yeah. So. Um, in the case of um, oh, oh, wrong one. So if you, for example, wanted to find out about June, you could then see that the yeah, you know, what the week numbers are, the week, what the what weeks have been archived to date or begun to be archived. And here I've created um, a, a kind of this can be cut and pasted pasted of what what groups have been archived and what ones haven't been archived um i will say that if it hasn't been ticked it doesn't necessarily mean it's um it may mean that um, the meeting's not been held or for some other reason yeah but this gives us a kind of overview of what has and hasn't been done <laughs> that suggests that if it hasn't if it wasn't there because it hasn't happened that mm. should be like in brackets after it so we know yeah uh if you can take a note of that at the end of this yeah, yeah. issue um and i just i probably should have created this as a separate issue i'm not sure if who's if rose here i'm not sure if he is here okay but the um at the i think it was um one of the meetings yesterday Oh, it's actually the town hall. And uh, Rojo mentioned uh, the summon platform he's using for decision making. Um, and we were, you know, what what came up was how do you archive that? Because you know, um, and I asked Rojo if he can export data, and we're not sure. Um, so we see this as kind of an interesting uh, case study, if you like, for archive perspective, because this is an interesting experiment. So I'm going to um, look at what Rojo's doing in, by look, reading through his channel and to attend his meeting on, I think it's Friday, and to look at the summer platform and to try and figure out a way of what we can archive, mainly from, um, you know, so that we can learn lessons from the summon experiment. So, um, and the rest of it is, the, here's, here's, here's the format for, this week, obviously, there's a lot, you know, as you say, Vanessa, there's, we need to work out a system about why something hasn't been archived and all, all that kind of thing. But if I pass it over to you now, Vanessa, because you're, this is also, uh, or, or, or to, you know, whoever wants to speak to this from the current archive perspective. I just had a question with um, where you were adding those links back to the Git book in so back to the GitHub issue in the Git book. Yeah. Are you adding that on the top of the page for each week, or are you just adding it at the start of the month? Just at the start of the month. Okay. Um, I could do it. We could do it at the start of each week. Might uh, make sense because, like, if you were just happening to look at week twenty-one, you wouldn't see it, would you? Okay. Um... I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's not that much work because it's just literally a cut and paste. So, um, yeah, okay. I mean, what do people think? Um, I mean, well, it's just basically the core team is going to have to do that over time. All you would have to remember to do, be part of the process, I suppose. Um, okay, I'll, I'll add it as add it to week um, because, and I'll put it as an action item 
here. Or have you have you taken notes here already? Or I'm just starting. Yeah, I'm just doing it now. Yeah, if you could just add as an action item um, um, for well for us to add um, the um, links to the month issue under each in the under each week yeah and if we as you say if we have it at the top you know uh, of each week then that gives us a nice little checklist to get to refer to and to, and also to make notes about things and stuff like that you know so okay all right yeah um, and you anyway, know this is the kind of so it's related to process the process that you the workflow sorry that you've been doing a little bit that's fine mm -hmm. okay the um oh can is... i just raise something before we move on i'm just looking yeah. at we've got archive kit book june we've also got in in progress january february march april and may should they not be moved to done no i wanted to discuss that later oh okay cool. yeah yeah there's a reason and i want to yeah we can get discuss that when we get to that issue um for the next issue it's the it's again you vanessa i think again it's the lnms to create archival finding aids yeah i mean i mentioned the idea of tagging as a starter for that but we haven't really done i think it, there's nothing to say on it because we haven't really okay fine so i'm going to see we should, we're going to have and this is interesting because we're going to see what we do and don't have time on it okay on the backlog um all these are tagged backlog. By the way, I've I've ordered the board this week by label, so we can sort of discuss things by category. Um, the reason why these are still open because um, for for, for um, a couple of reasons. One is that they are not absolutely complete, so they need to be checked to see the completeness. The other thing is what does completeness mean <laughs> as well um because um what we're finding we're finding gaps you know if, if we find a gap in information like and i think what do we take as our source of reference do we take the calendar as our source of reference that kind of thing and if something is missing do we just accept something's missing and move on that's a kind of open question there maybe um then, um, so take April here, for example. Here, April is still to do. It's not completed. Um, um, so what what I could do, rather than mark them as completed, I could create a special category for them on the project board where we park them. So... Um, so, for example, if I completed May and April, and then we took them to to put them in in an archive category or something, so that because they it's like um as Tivo said, the, the you things we need to go back to how how when do we say something has been archived? I suppose when do we say it's been? I will the way I kind of use it on my work. I don't know how can you do it in GitHub is that you still kind of complete it, but you create an action item that let's say you say that all of these archives will require or will need a requirement list. Like what are default uh, in, like links to find resources if caps are in the, the thing. And then also you also included an action item of having a standard uh like a list of requirements for each meeting so if if you always have these two action items kind of in in the in like development tag or something then mm, yeah you will basically if something changes then that task will also say that okay once you've implemented the change now go go back to the archive pull out all the previous stuff and include these elements or, or make yeah. yeah yeah this feels to me like it's part of the workflow as well yeah. so maybe i should work it into that but yeah. um, in terms of like definitions of done and you were saying like 
you know, if there's stuff we need to go looking for or chase. My feeling is you chase it once. If you get no response, then you just note that the material wasn't given. I, I don't know. What yeah. Yeah, the other thoughts from people. I mean, I, I'm picking up, I, maybe it's an issue, yeah, it's a workflow issue. I, 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 so it does need to be covered there in that sense. So I'll... Um, but also my feeling now you've explained why they're yeah. still in progress. I think just keep them in progress because it means that every meeting yeah. we go through and we look, don't we? Yeah. I mean, also I can, I mean, I'm just worried about the... Um, the board becoming unwieldy but what we can do we can filter the board so it's not a problem so much so but we do need a workflow to cover backlog and, and also i suppose what it means for maybe for for, for a month to be completed Go on, uh, there should be i have heard i know it adds more text uh, yeah. into the archive work kitbook but if you put like a work group lead or good lead or like like a person or like discord name behind it then or or use a tag to you that is like labeled by discord name or something i don't know assign a list isn't really the yeah. real thing but based on that you know who to hunt yeah. for information yeah, and yeah, like uh, Vanessa said, that if no default link is given, then and the new link is given, which is like a links of default links, <laughs> which is like updated later, but it's yeah. like when and somebody finds this specific link, he at least has that like a live document where standard is held. I'm not following. Are you meaning like assigning the issue to whoever the work group lead that's missing? Or do you just mean putting a note next to it on who to contact? Yeah, like where yeah, we've got onboarding. The, the, the second. Yeah, okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that's why I yeah, to put a kind of a point of contact to, to chase up, yeah. So um again, this is a work in progress, so we need to sort of work out. Yeah, you know, what we keep open, how it all fits into the workflow. But um, at the moment, I think I agree we keep them open and um, then see how it goes. Um, I, I, on the second part of this, I, I think I covered the immediate backlog. The reason why they are issues for January and February um, is Miro here at all? I can't see who's here. No, I don't think he's here. He isn't here. Okay. Um, is because Miro has um, started work um, with um, on the backlog. And the reason why he's working on the backlog and not the ongoing archive is to gain experience. So, I mean, he's concerned that if you're making any mistakes or anything, they, they're not, they don't affect the current record. Um, so, um, and so basically Miro has started to do in week four it's been due of january and we're going through and we're trying to get, work out this system whereby uh because miro is learning how to use the git book as well uh, for this method uh, so he's he's archiving things as he finds them and then he's messaging me for any gaps, particularly uh, TiVo on the mirror board stuff, because what we're doing is going back. So, for example, this process guild meeting from January, uh, this was archived by Miro, um, and then he leaves a link to the mirror board, and then I will go back and uh, you know archive those mirror boards. Um, so it's a bit like a kind of a, a mixture of archiving and training. So that's why that's any opens. Any questions about that? No. Okay. So the same for February as well. We're, um, so we're working on these two months. Okay. Uh, guidance notes for meeting facilitators. This is uh, Vanessa again. 
Yeah, I mean, I've been talking to people. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see um, the notes I've added. Um, and I've got a list of people I need to speak to. And Tommy, you're at the top of it. So, do you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, I think maybe there's a question here about how much information people want to be added to a GitHub issue. Because I've just added some of the key comments that have come out from discussions just for interest. But I may well delete it. I don't know if people think it should be in the issue. But there were some interesting comments. Um Read AI summaries are not actually much use to a lot of people, but chapters and topics actually are helpful. Um, there was a question about um, the SNET paid for Read AI is without video. Is that right? Mm. I think it is. I think what they've paid for now is a non-video one, right, Tiva? I think we actually have a video, but its oh. quality is... Uh... That's right. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's small. It's, it's only small quality. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so there's that. But yeah, the general feeling is that really people are like, no, if if I want a video, I'll record it on Zoom. I don't mm. need to use AI and um, the Read AI one. And also, Read AI summaries are not very good, but the chapters and topic headings are useful as kind of um, helping people to navigate. Um, also, what's come out quite a lot is how useful people find Miro boards in meetings. And so people were saying, well, it's not ideal archivally, it's a pain in the ass, but it's such a useful tool for people that we just need as an archive group to find a way to work around it. And we're kind of doing that. Mm -hmm. And the discussion that came out in Process Guild yes yesterday as well was kind of a progression of that. So yeah, it's getting there. Um, that point that came from TiVo that we mentioned earlier, how if people run more than one work group they carry information into each meeting that they do and they help to make the connections that make the whole kind of ecosystem hang together but also then the next question that came out was we need to discuss as a community i think maybe how how useful video is or we could just say look from an archival point of view you know, we don't generally need it. This ties into what I'm going to say in terms of guidance notes for meeting facilitators. Obviously, the A the Read AI um, video is not that useful because it's really small. But are we saying, look, you do need to record a video in some way, like through Zoom or whatever? Or are we saying, look, it's optional? Does anyone have any uh, responses to that? I would say it's optional because like I think throughout these few years that this, we have made a decision to turn it on and off and make it standard and make it optional like way too many times. So I guess it's it depends on need and I know maybe a group size also <laughs> has as effect. But um, yeah, I don't know. Tommy, sorry, David. Do you have any thoughts on this, Tommy? Because uh, I mean, I remember you asking the question about why are we using Read AI. Uh, I'm not sure if you can speak, Tommy. So I can't see. Sorry, you. I'm having some technical issues no, here. That, um, that's fine. Yeah. Fine. Yeah, the the read eye. I mean, is anybody listening to it? Is is the question? And if we do shoot the vids during Zoom, is anybody actually watching them? Um, and, and along that lines, I just saw posted today or yesterday. Someone said there's a new Miro board out that it combines Chat GPT. Uh, you know, would that help archive it? Tiva. Um, I wasn't so <laughs> sorry. Uh, Tommy was mentioning there's a chat GDP linking or function in Miro boards now. Is that helpful in an archiving perspective? What does it output to text? Because if it does, I'm just like, yes, that is what we need. Technically, yes, it does work, but I, <laughs> in some reason, I don't really use that much. I, I can show you how it works, but it's it summarizes its clusters by keywords now. Interesting. And it actually has a cluster of sentiment. It used to only do summarization for me. 
Should we and, do? Yeah, go on, carry on. But I'm like, I don't haven't seen like a very good use case yet. But let's say maybe it has gotten better. So I'm tomorrow's agenda item. I'm summarizing it. I mean, we, we could have um, an act, we'll raise an action item to look into that, maybe, Vanessa. Mm. Yeah, yeah, or, that'd be good, actually. Um, um, I case. don't know how, how I would look into it because I haven't got a paid, um, what do you call it? My should room. share the screen because that, that actually yeah. was quite good. Uh, but I need to stop yours then. Is it okay? Yeah, but not. Maybe not I, now. Not, maybe. not right now because we're trying to keep in the meeting cadence. Yeah. But okay. Let's do it in the second half of the meeting because, like, no, there's not that many people here who don't already know how to archive something. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's a subscription of share screen to work on it. I'm going to do multitasking here and mirror. Um, okay. Are we... Is there any, any other questions or queries about the guidance notes there and any other action items? Just to say that it's still in progress and I've still got to talk to some people, so I'll hope to have a finalised version for people to agree or disagree with next meeting so maybe we just update the due date oh yeah um so i'll actually i'll put that to well we're it's on the correct date so i'll put i'll put the due date for the next meeting okay so it's two weeks from now okay uh, um we're now going on to that was a community a, uh, engagement um label but now we're on to the development labels um uh, I, very quickly, I haven't done any work on this, so um, I need to, the next steps were for me to um, um, progress the development by uh, passing a corpus, a Git book corpus to the Lang chain thing, but I haven't done that yet. So I'll update the due date for, again, two weeks, and when if I have time, um, I'll record any progress here. Um, the same goes for LNM training, which um, again um, I haven't been able had time to do that. Um, um, what I need to do is to um, resample some questions on the Git books and document them. So again, I'll I'll change the due date for that. And Andre, um, you've put in an issue for um a tool development yes yeah i've created the repo and i installed the frameworks along so you know, next steps is i'm going to install langchain and login phase yeah and start playing with them but and i also need to set up a database but i i'll do that after the Nanjing and login face. So that's um, is that a um, a, a, is that like a GraphQL type database? Yes, I'm gonna try. The <coughs> I'm I'm using Supervisor. They've got ah, a plugin that I think you can do vector databases on there. So I'm gonna try. And, both a vector database. Okay. That's good. Um, and if you can, I mean, if even, I mean, I don't expect you to document everything, Andre, but if you can take notes or paste them here and mm -hmm. at some point we can document it, yeah? Yes, yes, yes. I'm just a bit confused by how the notes that you're writing are actually a duplicate of what Andre's already written when he's created the the task. So I don't know why those notes are needed. Yeah. Well, um I'm you know, I was on autopilot. So okay. Okay. <laughs> no, I just I thought I was in terms of process, that's all. No, I I just can't when I'm doing this, I, I'm you know yeah. chairing a meeting and taking notes. You just can't pay attention to everything. That's why I will. I will. Uh, I will 
add notes about the database and all yeah yeah, yeah. that's not on there yeah okay so yeah i suppose it takes taking notes for the meeting so at some point document um uh, the development process development yes. uh, process and and uh functionality because the idea is or, uh, as before we've worked on other projects andre is like it's just to make sure that it's also it's like a teaching age as well you know so yes yes okay uh, I'll link, I'll just, while we're here, um, yeah, so I'll just open that repo. You've, that's the archive, sorry, the repository that uh, Andre's created and installed um, the uh, JavaScript framework tooling. So thanks for that, Andre. Um, okay. Any other, I'll put the, well, actually the start date was, yesterday i'll put um in this, okay. and then i'll put i'll put the due date so we have an update for two weeks yes. any other questions or queries about this any, any suggestions um, for, go on yeah i'm still i'm i've got an idea of what it want what i wanted to do but i don't know Oh, I'm going to, it's going to be a learning process. So it's yeah, sure. Some, huh? I mean, the, I mean, the other thing I suppose is thinking about who we can collaborate with, Andre, because the one thing I might, I'll put in notes here, but we can edit them at some point, is to reach out to Felix um, yes. for, um, um, about, What's the company he's working with, TiVo, for the proposal on the deep funding stuff? I think it's Mesh. Mesh, yeah. Mesh, about Mesh. Mesh yeah. About Mesh resources. Mesh. So I, I think um, in the conversation I had with TiVo, he was discussing that maybe we could share knowledge. Yeah. Um, yes. So, um, so again, I'll, I'll, put, I'll put both our names there. Um, what, what were you thinking in terms of you have a? I know you, I don't want to you know, you know say oh we, you have a rough idea. Do you, are you thinking more of um, so you set up some sort of functionality using the JavaScript framework and then we feed it some corpus? Yeah, Andre. Yes. Yeah. So what I'm thinking, well, one. One thing that I wanted to do at the end of the day is you can just ask it if you want to know, you want to find anything related to something. You can just ask it and it will show you everything that covers that topic. Okay, so... Anything that's been archived. Related information queries, I suppose. On, yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, on a well, it would be a Git book corpus, probably, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, it's everything that's in the Git book. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Okay, so we, I'll just leave it there because I don't want to, because obviously early stages. But I suppose that will also relate to um, the progress we're making on the Lens LLM and possibly has some crossover with archival finding aids, Vanessa. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but, definitely. Okay. But but that's great. And um I'll move on from that. Thanks for starting that, Andre. Um okay, governance skip book. Um it's the final item of the project board. Um where we left this was to um ah did I put those notes in? Or was that you? Um, you did, but I just added a link to the debug tasks. All right, okay. There you go. So um, do you want to cover this, Vanessa? Um, honestly, I think it's another one that there's not much to say other than what's already in the notes. Um, 
it feels a little bit like the governance meetings are a little bit slow to get people engaged, but we have got de work tasks to do the things that are there. And those are, I think, ultimately connected with the archiving and, and the git book, the, the governance git book. But um, yeah, it's just feeling a little bit like people are really busy and, right. you know, it's going to take a little while to get these things done. But um, I don't, ah, yeah, I'll come to that later because you've got something on the agenda next. No, that's that's coming to the end of the, that's the last issue. So, but I'll, I'll does any, is there any, I'll put it again about that general questions. Any questions or queries about this from anyone? about the governance skip book i know we have the felix's governance work group meeting is on tuesdays isn't it and he had one yesterday and we were there a lot of us or all of us and um so this is related to that isn't it vanessa but it's it's really yeah. just um archiving and proofreading is that right yeah basically yeah i mean what we're going to archive is like when it's done and it's a matter for the governance work group to get it done so yeah and that's really what we're waiting on isn't it yeah okay okay um the last issue is the meeting issue so that's 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 the end of the project board um stand up um is it oh, i was probably I should ask uh, is there um, any other issues we need to add at all or well, that's the thing. I think most people here know how to add an issue, but I was thinking because these meetings were supposed to also give people a bit of onboarding to GitHub, I was going to suggest we added an issue live so that people knew how, but everyone does know how. But I suggest it could be about how we're going to publicise these meetings. If we haven't okay. got many people here, we maybe need to do something. So maybe we should add that as an issue to the board. Okay, but I... is, is there anyone here who doesn't know how to add an issue? Everyone does, obviously, right? Because if anyone doesn't, we could actually do it live now. I think it'd be good to, if I can sort of hand over it now to the second half of the session and you, if I stop screen sharing, Vanessa, and then you add yeah. an issue live. All right, all so, right. So I'll stop the spread, all and right. if, you, if you... Let me just... Yeah. Um, yeah, just let me find where I've actually got it open. And um, I agree, it'd be good from an educational perspective, and we can tie. Well, yeah, we'll have it on the recording, won't we? Yeah, so yeah, that'll, exactly. be, that'll be good. Um, no, that's not right. Sorry, let me stop sharing. <laughs> I can't find the right window. There it is. All right. Okay, so I prefer to be in Kanban view because it makes more sense to me. But you can talk me through it from there, can't you? Yeah. Um... Well, I'm on the second one just to remind myself of how to, <laughs> how to add. <laughs> well, you can, uh, I mean, do you create when you create a new issue? Do you create it in to do and then move it, or do you create it in in progress if that's where you want it to be? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think you can do it either way. No, oh. I'm thinking about our practice. Should we oh, do oh, which okay. way? Should we I think the best practice best practice is probably to start in to do and then go to add item where it says the plus. Yeah. No, no, at the bottom. Yeah. Um, then type in the name of the issue. The title. Okay. What's this then? Type hash to select a repository. Surely it's going to be in the repository that we're in. No, no. Just type in the title. Um, no, I'm talking, I'm trying to, on the recording, get an explanation for things that people might find confusing. So in what circumstances do you need to type hash to select a repository? That would select an existing issue from a, a repository. So if you type in a hash now, for example, yeah. do that now, that will give you a list of repositories that are in our singularity net organisation. Okay, but, but it, if you it, don't do that, then it goes into the one you're in, presumably. It will it? default to the top one, yeah. Okay, right, so what we're going to call this... Um... Yeah, keep it short and then just click enter or press enter. Okay. And, and you see the draft there, if you click on the dots, I think, beside it, convert it to issue. 
and select the top repository. So that's putting the issue in that repository. Yeah. Thank you, now you've created it. So if you click on the issue, um, then you can edit it. We should be able to. Okay. Yeah. So I could add a description. Um, yeah, best practice is yeah. to have a short title and then a sentence description, at least. Okay, okay. and then you need to okay. assign it. So uh, the assignee will be yourself. Is that, is that right? Or... I think it should be more than just me. <laughs> That's not yeah. fair. No, give everything to Vanessa. I'm going to assign everybody. Okay. And uh, then there's labels. The labels are standard at the moment, but just see what's available. Well, it's going to be community engagement, I would have thought. Yeah, that's what we have. Um, oh, God, what have I done? So you can click back if you you can stay there as even as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 Scroll down, and then you need to select um, labels uh, milestone. The milestone is the um, is just there's only one milestone. So if you click on that, and there's a quarterly budget. Yeah. Um, what else do we have? I think that's it. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Due, no, 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 no. If you go back, if you go back to the Kanban board, because it's kind of. Oh, okay. You must have opened that in a new new tab, yeah. Okay, so scroll down. The due start date is the today's date. The start the, date. Yes, the seventh. No, that's the due um, date. That's the due date. So. Oh, sorry. Okay, well, let's make the due date the next meeting, and yeah. let's make the start date today. Yeah. That's mad, isn't it? Having it the wrong way around like that. I think I can change that. It's my <laughs> fault. <laughs> <laughs> and then the budget, the budget, then you need to choose the budget. The budget is the uh, archive work group budget. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, Dick. And that's it. That's it. Okay. So while we're on this then, has anybody got any ideas for how to publicise it? And I'll put in. Um... I, I can tell uh, the one one issue we actually have with this like we, we discussed it in i think ambassador call to that now when Stephen is an assignee for this task and is part of ambassador he actually would slash the rewards of this task by 25 percent sorry i didn't follow what what <laughs> i think you're talking about the budget categories aren't you yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, it's not. We need to give some thought to the budget categorization. So no, I think you're actually doing it the right and uh, like more way that is able to kind of have a better standard. And on July, the the changes will be made so that this is this is no longer an issue. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not really related to this subject, but um, yeah. So can we can we it's really about what I'm doing is I'm if the issue is being worked on by the archive work group, I'm assigning it to the archive work group budget. Even but but there there is a, I have actually been doing some of that work myself, which officially is supposed to be charged to the ambassador. Okay, but the, I, to, to resolve confusion, I've just charged it to the archive work group. Mm. Um, and also the, the other exceptions are, for example, Miro's work. Miro's done some work on the backlog in January and February, and that's the ambassador's budget <laughs> because it's part of the backlog. So, but we need to sort this out at some point in terms of how, but that's the system I'm using. Sorry, Vanessa. No, I was just going to say, we've got an open task about finalising the budget in the actual proposal. So maybe we could talk about that in with doing that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, sure. Cool. No, so all I was going to say is while there's a few of us here, has anybody got, I've just added three ideas, but has anybody got anything else they think might get people here? Is it clashing with anything? Is, is there a reason why no one's coming or do they just hate us? Is it... 
Tell me. No. Sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can hit, you can hear you, yeah. Okay. Um, I was I was laughingly saying it's because it's so early in the morning. They hate you. Um, but it's not early for you, obviously. Um, no, I think right now, uh, if you notice, all meetings are um, having decreased volume because of burnout, a little bit of meeting burnout. Yeah, yeah. Do you think there's any solutions to that, Tommy? Or do we just, is this a phase? I, I think it's a phase. Uh, I think each work group has to um, get a cadence of who's going to support them. And, and this is why we really need to start increasing the, the ranks of ambassadors. Um, there's only, not everybody is meeting oriented. Yeah. And there's only so many hours. And what, you know, yesterday was how many hours in meetings. And today, if you go to Catalyst meeting is, is like eight hours of meeting. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a burnout and, uh, we, we really need to grow the ambassador ranks. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned that because so it's not, it's not that they hate you. It's just a lot of people don't, <laughs> a lot of people just don't understand the reason for archiving. Yeah. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. And I wondered if maybe what we need to do is sell it for what it is like, maybe, I know when I first introduced that we were having our introductory meeting, a couple of people have said, oh, yeah, I'd like to come and learn a bit more about how to use GitHub. So maybe if we mm. mentioned in the like meetings immediately before it, like, you know, Mondays and Tuesdays, like Ambassador's Town Hall and just went, oh, come along because you can learn this. That might help. I, I think that's yeah, I think that's a good idea. And if, if you tie in uh, the lens DAO, the AI portion of it, uh, it, it may make it a little more sexy. I mean, another thing, because, the, I mean, the reason why, part of the reason why we have this meeting bi-weekly every two weeks was to try and avoid that burnout, Tommy. Um, but also, and also another reason why we have a core team um, because we found in the past experience that if you have a dedicated team, you tend to get more done and there's less burnout. Um, although what what you said about um, maybe we could divide the meeting more into two, and this is just thinking off the top of my head, Vanessa, where we could, um, because the project board section is very much a working session and could be quite boring for a lot of people, maybe. So we could maybe split that into one part of the meeting and then have another part of the meeting, which is like hands-on. What do you have think? We already got that. That's no, exactly but, but, how the meetings are structured. Already. No, but we, but we could advertise it that way. So we could just say you can join one or you don't have to, you don't have to join the whole meeting. You can join one one or the other. I'm not sure if that would help. But, um... Yeah, we could. Too. I mean, do you do you think we should take the hands on bit first? And well, then... no. I was thinking we could just say join at say um, an hour later, or so we'd advertise them as maybe even two Zoom links. I'm not sure. Oh no. No, oh, no. that's, uh, that's too much. <laughs> okay, we we just say well, if you want to have a hands on session, join at. Um, um, you know, uh, 1500 UTC or whatever it is, I think it's actually 1400 UTC. Yeah. Um, but if you want to have the whole meeting, join an hour earlier. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. One yeah. hour of tragedy and housekeeping, another hour of doing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Because the the project board needs to be done. And the reason why I'm doing it is so it's all transparent and everyone can see what's going on. But it, to be frank, it can be quite, it's very much orientated to our work. And a lot of people from the outside might either find it boring or confusing. I'm not sure what people think here. Yeah, I think they may do. I mean, yeah, it wouldn't hurt to like 
keep the message that the meeting is in two parts and you don't have to come to all of it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. <clears throat> I think it's good because uh, some people might also only be able to join a little bit later and then mm. they know they can participate in that. Yeah, and that's also good because like Tommy said, it is quite early for the yes. US contingent. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, how about then if we say, um, if I say I will for the next meeting post in Discord the day before, can we all undertake to mention it in meetings more and to mention this whole thing about you can join, you know, an hour later if you want the practical bit and the sort of the selling points? Or do we need to put names by that? Yeah, I suppose it's also the ambassadors. That's my responsibility to, um, I'm not sure if you agree with this, Tommy, the ambassadors should should talk about their meet work groups at the town hall. Would you agree with that? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. I, I think that's a good idea, and I slowly think that we need to, uh, reading between the lines uh, of what yesterday's meeting was about, Sophia verse, um, we need to, I think in each Discord channel of the ecosystem, start putting our meetings in each one of them, uh, Cogito, Sophia verse, Sophia Dow, et cetera, et cetera and start inviting um, people uh, from the other ECOs that may not be aware that SNET has its own ambassador cadre and start bringing them in. I think cross-marketing might be a good thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely, yeah. I mean, on that point, I'm not sure how, because you weren't at the uh, ambassador town hall, Vanessa, but um, there may be opportunities, and this may be something we can discuss for um for archive to have some crossover with sophia um mm. because they are going to launch a platform which is going to provide um like a learning platform um and one we we could the archive work group could take advantage of that i think it's called sophia verse i'm not sure mm. the um so we could, for example, uh, this is just off the top of my head, we could do a module on the Sophia verse that relates to archiving or something, or or it could be about governance or whatever. But as Tommy says, that will allow us to have crossover yeah. with, with another community. And I think that's brilliant. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. But I do actually feel that, yeah, this is like, I'm glad we've got this in this issue, but I think we also need to think a little bit more immediately for the next work group. So, yeah, if it's about posting in Discord and mentioning it, it in um, ambassadors meetings, you know, I'm happy to do that. And so are you. So that's great. But I just wondered, does anybody on the issue, on the idea of directly inviting individuals that we think might be interested, can anybody think of anyone who is like, oh, they'd be interested in this? Newman, maybe? Oh, yes. Very good. Definitely. Uh, I had invited Newman in and uh, he came in for one meeting and he hasn't shown back up. But if you guys reach out. Yeah, I think, well, I think maybe if we invited him particularly to an archive session, because I know he's very interested in documentation. So, yeah. yeah. Does anybody else spring to mind? Because I just see, like, I look at the Discord for the various, you know, especially for the Ambassador Pro, there's lots of people in there and they don't ever engage and I don't know what they're interested in and if they might be keen i mean maybe it's worth posting something more general so yeah i'll try that all right well that's that then and i can unshare is stephen here no he's gone oh no he's back no he's not <laughs> No. All right. So we've only got like 20 minutes, but what I wanted to do in this you know, last bit of the session, which is meant to be the practical one, is to actually have a go at archiving something live. And 
I don't know if that would that be interesting to people or shall we finish the meeting early? Because I sort of feel like Andre, you know, I have a task on a schedule right now that is. I know. Like, uh, Ambassador Verprok Sumari. Yeah. And then we could actually test the Mirabor stuff and perhaps, I don't know, yeah. you can show how you take it to the GitHub from Mirabor. And then the difficulty perhaps... of that is that I know that Stephen's the only person who does that and it is very slow because the Mirabor is so big. And so I don't think we'll be able to do it live. That's the thing. Yeah. I have the access to GitHub too, so maybe it's just oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Copy paste the picture and, and kind of feel the pain you go through. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It is. I could. Yeah, I don't know what to say. I, I mean, I, <laughs> I mean, because it's really a one level team. But it's really good that you've archived everything. You know, because we we do have an archive. It's yeah a, a bit annoying that it's on Miro because it does take. Like each frame on a mirror board for a meeting, it takes me about 10 to 15 minutes to archive it, mainly because it's quite slow and so it's silly things like that. Um, maybe going forward, I get it's all about, as you know, it's all about how much work it creates for us. You know, um, I think it's quite valuable to archive the frames. I mean, if, if you created a frame, Breach meeting, could you save it yourself or is that too much? Technically, it feels too much, but I could do it if I know that it takes forever for you. Because to me, it's like you know, 10 yeah. seconds. Yeah, I'll keep doing it my way um, and we'll see how we go. But yeah, because that's the only solution I can think of, but that just pushes the work to you and that's not really fair, you know. So. I mean, should we have a go at it practically? I mean, does anybody fancy actually... I mean, we've got... Hang on, let me just share screen a second. In the Meeting Summaries channel, we have got, as yet unarchived, we've got Governance Work Group from yesterday, and we've got Ambassador Town Hall, and we've got Process Guild. So we could pick one of those and just do it live, and it should take 10 minutes, and then everyone's seen how it works what do you reckon yeah. who fancies doing it because I'm thinking that whoever is doing it should screen share and work through it like we just did with me creating a an issue and if there's Maybe... any questions that come up then we deal with them should I we do... have like 35 minutes right now or like I mean 45 minutes I well, that... no, because we sort of said an hour and a half, didn't we, for these meetings? An oh, hour and a half, okay. I mean, no, I mean... Because you shared, like, at the middle that I show my robot AI and yeah. this summarization capabilities. Yeah. We could and do then that. I put use segue that into, like, yeah, just creating a summary itself. And take it Actually, I'm wrong. We are supposed to be two hours, aren't we? But um, we can finish early, but... Yeah, no, I'm just keen to establish, because we've said that this half of the meeting will be practically doing some work. So I'm kind of keen to try and make that happen. Oh, do so, you want someone other, other than me to do that? No, so, yeah, because that, yeah. that's the idea, is that people learn by doing. Mm -hmm. So, Andre, are you up for that? <laughs> yeah, they were... They were... It, You've got access to, and then we can move on to TiVo's thing afterwards. Yeah, so. okay. Okay, so have you got access to the meeting summary channel on Discord? Yes, let me open it. And if mm. you could share your, do you have, is your, if you could share screen, if possible. Maybe I yes, need to make yes. you a co-host. Do I need to make you a co-host? Uh, you are a co-host, yeah. So. Um, yeah. Let me just... Find all the. Uh, I think it's this one. Oh. I'm going to share my screen now. Cool. Um, 
because I know there's sometimes connection issues. Uh, Okay, shit, it's three. Yep, that's that's the ambassador's one. And what I'd recommend you do, so if you select a meeting. Oh, am I in the right place? Yeah, you are. That's yeah, the, you are. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So first of all, I mean, maybe, maybe go with the governance work group because that's the first one yeah. chronologically. What I would do, um, Andre, is if you've got um, text file, text editor yes. on Windows, yeah, can you so copy the text that Felix has posted and paste it into text editor first? Okay. And the, you know, the reason why we're doing that is to retain, otherwise, it all squashes it all together. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, so there you have now go to the Git book. Um, which is the archive Git book. Um, and I can't remember the date of that meeting now. What was the... <laughs> It was yesterday. It was, it, was the... <laughs> it was yesterday. So go to June, uh, June. week 23. Week 23. Mm -hmm. Yesterday was Tuesday. Tuesday, uh, yeah. Yeah. So go okay. down below or above the Ambassador's Town Hall. You can okay. do it above, so... above or below. So, uh, yeah. so below the Tuesday header, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. and insert paragraph or a heading, heading two, yeah, two. and then the name of the meeting. Just double check. What happened? Oh my goodness! I think I think Git book happened. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay, what? just uh, what I do is put it in as a paragraph because they're first. So just delete that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's delete it. Yeah. I'm putting the paragraph first of all. Put in the paragraph first of all. Paragraph. And then just type in governance guild. Is it? Yeah. Governance work group. Isn't work it? group. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, format it later, or you know, I would format it later, or, or you know, then paste in under in, in create a paragraph yet, yeah, and then paste in the text from the text editor. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then go to the top and then create a heading for that heading two. Yeah. So there you've created it. Now you need to tidy it all up. So. This this link should I maybe... keep that keep the link so I'd take out the well the, obviously the governance work group and the date is a repetition so you can delete that. You don't, oh, need, yeah. Yeah, you don't need that. So you just want a uh, meeting summary keep where's this meeting summary meeting or meeting notes summary meeting notes. I can put this maybe like do this. And then yeah, you've actually make... got two links smooshed together there. You've got the Google Doc link and then you've got the D work link. Oh, there's two links. Oh goodness. Yeah. I okay, think the so... first first thing you do, I would separate out the different sections. So okay. the meeting summary, meeting notes, or, or summary meeting notes, take out the meeting at the beginning again. The, oh, the work yes, book, yeah, because yeah, it's okay. a repetition there. Okay. And then create a space underneath notes. So after that, and enter, okay, that now, and then the same for D work task, enter, yeah, and then, because each of those are, are headings, yeah? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, so. Should I make these? Yeah, make it heading three. For for the summary meeting notes, where for those headings, oh, oh this, okay. yeah. So, and the same for the G work oh. task. Okay. No, no, yeah, not the whole link, just the heading. Just the. Yeah. No, sorry. Oh. I, 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 yeah, just remove all that from the whole all the links because the links are just information. That's it. 
And you actually have to create it as a link in Gitbook, don't you? You have to highlight that, copy I it, can, and then go create link. And it can we do this? Point. Maybe if you... yeah, you can also do. Andre's right. You can also create a. You can compress mm -hmm. it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Which is sometimes better to. It's easier on the eye sometimes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that's great, Andre. Uh, now. I think Felix has just done a summary in paragraphs, hasn't he? He has. And I mean, my question here in terms of how we work is, do we take that wholesale or do we tidy it up a bit? Because it is quite long. I, I been, I've been just taking it what people have put, but... Um... He's put, he's has some he's put some action items, doesn't he, as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, which should be kind of highlighted, I guess. Yeah, I find it very hard to kind of update somebody else's work, and it's going to create a huge bottleneck if yeah. the more and more groups are gonna do it. Like our higher work group is just gonna eat the internal budget to kind of keep up with that. So I think this. Editing should be pushed to edges. I mean, there's all there's also another way you could go. TiVo is to create a standard format for meeting summaries, but that may be too restrictive for people. I mean, it looks like Felix has used GPT to generate a lot of content, so <laughs> perhaps <laughs> providing a prompt. That does the same thing. Could and have do, do, to see what kind of prompt was used to get that would be and maybe more structural. Yeah, I mean he has. I mean on the plus side, uh, he has created a few paragraphs that describe what happened in the meeting. That's good if you want to find out about the meeting. Yeah. He has a section of action items. They're not as good as, they're not separated out very clearly, um, but at least he has action items. So I would merge that then, Andre. Andre. Just, okay. yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. The other thing is just on the thing that we said earlier about if you know there is something else to add. I took the notes in slides, which Felix and I have been experimenting with, so I know they're there. So I've just put them in the chat, and I think we should add them. Okay. okay. Yeah. Maybe put them at the top with the other links, I guess. What what is what is our uh, slides? Yeah. Okay. So up with up at the top where you've got the other links to the Google Doc D work. Mm -hmm. Is it Google Slides? I'll have a look now. While it's quiet for a moment, can I ask a question? Yeah. I, I was ruminating on your question about uh, getting more people into the meetings. And yeah. since you're talking about D work here, um, most of the other work groups that have a bigger crowd offer D work projects. So uh, people can come in and earn a few dollars. 
um, maybe something to consider here. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think that I thought somebody else might answer that. But yeah, I think that's right. Um, we have we did have some conversation about whether people who come to meetings and get involved to the point of maybe doing some archiving should be paid. And then we scratched our heads about from where. <laughs> like, yeah. And should it just be gimbals or should it be but yeah, it does engage people. It's only reasonable that it should. So maybe we need to rethink that because I think where we left it last time we talked about it was that it would be gimbals only but maybe that's something we need to rethink yeah i i, I think you know gimbals is a cardano token and that that crossover and this is what we were talking about brand identity even mm -hmm. on the zoom meeting where it says cardano but there's what is there there's three or four of you guys there's a core team um, who else knows how to do that? So if you actually set it up and you pay people to learn mm -hmm. via, you know, ten dollar an hour D work, and uh, we're not using hourly rates though. That's the thing. What what's that? We're not using hourly rates, so it would no, be not not for yourselves, it. not for yourselves within. And I'm talking a, a way to get external, and I yeah, understand. Yeah, no, but it's still a principle that we're not using hourly rates, so we just have to do it per task. Then do it per task, whatever whatever works for you guys. But if you set it up and you train people and you pay them to train, mm. um, you'll start attracting people, and you'll also have replacements eventually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a really good point, and I think um, something mm -hmm. that we should do. I mean, I suppose the only thing there is the budget. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so because we're we're not really even covering our own expenses at the moment, particularly yeah. where we are, just about maybe. Um, I suppose that goes for all other work groups, though. Thinking about it, Tommy. So it's a uh, it's a balance between how we get work done for a work group and how do we incentivize people. I agree with you. I think paying people is a great way to incentivize them. Um, I mean, tell me, what do you think about the ethics of like how much we pay people? Because we can't afford people to pay people the going rate for like archive work. But I kind of think since they're training, that's okay. I don't know. What do you think? I think the whole pay scale in crypto sucks. I think it's big <laughs> corporations are taking advantage of little people yeah. and we're, we're it, it, it's, but it is web three, web four, web five. I don't know. And it's, it's a whole new thing. So I, I have a hard time judging it, but mm -hmm. at the same time, I think if you get a continent where $10 an hour is mana, um, then you pay ten dollars an hour, and you don't get the people that are used to working fifty bucks an hour, a hundred bucks an hour, or five hundred bucks an hour, and that's just market um, cap, you know, capitalism and laissez faire. So I think it sucks the whole scenario. I really like your experiment, um, but at the same time, there is a budget we're working on, and mm -hmm. and and you have a three hour heads up notice to ask for more money. Yeah, in strategy right. guild and justify it yeah no i suppose i was just asking whether people think it's ethically bad to pay people you know we can't afford to pay people the rate even for a professional archivist because you know even though that is extraordinarily low for the level of knowledge and skill that archivists have but we can't afford to pay that to people so is it ethical to pay people much less than the going rate because that's what we've got well in the gig economy and i've done a i've done a lot of reading on it and in the gig economy if someone needs money they'll take the gig yeah and and the ethics is then hey i'm offering what i can afford do you want to work for it it's not an ethics will it feed your family though it might depending on where the person yeah. comes from um, I suppose, yeah, and, I'm kind of thinking that it's like it should be a lower rate if people are learning as well. 
Uh, yeah, and, and that's up to you. But uh, ask for more money in the budget today, and it'll get argued. The whole concept I'm introducing is going to get argued. Mm -hmm. And as it should, it debated, argued, whatever you want to call it. And hopefully we'll come to consensus and then we go to a private vote Yeah. Um, to keep Stephen happy. That's all just to keep Stephen happy. <laughs> what, the yeah. whole singularity now is to keep, wow. Yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> no, but the, uh, no, just for, I mean, if you're going to meet in Vanessa, the current, yeah. there's currently around about 4,000 Ajax roughly for the ambassador per month. Yeah. And about 2,600 Ajax for the work group for, per yeah. month. And that's from May and June. Yeah. Uh, it, as Tommy says, uh, that's, that's well, for the work group, that's nothing. That's like, it's not really going to cover, it barely covers this meeting for the work group people. Yeah. Uh, but the question is, what can, be, what can the ambassador's programme afford? You know, I suppose that's one way. And how the money should be used as well. Should it be used to incentivize participation or should it be used to pay a core work group? Yeah. It feels like it's got to be a bit of both because I think Tommy's right that paying people something for coming and learning and practicing, it helps onboard people and get people involved, which is what we want. But right. So, yeah, so Vanessa... In my opinion, Vanessa, you should be an ambassador and you should apply for an ambassadorship. Everybody that's working in your group should become ambassadors. The The core ambassador rate will probably be somewhere two to six hundred Ajax a month. But we open up double dipping so you can also get paid wow. now under this new scenario for working in this work group, which currently is an ambassador. You cannot. Right. Um, so it's it's giving a my concept is to give a base stipend. Yeah, yeah. I see for attending meetings and stuff like that, but allow like I want to get back to writing, and I want to get back to my videos. Mm -hmm. Okay, but attending all these meetings and doing all this administrative engineering is is killing my time from my creativity side. Yeah. And I think a lot of the other ambassadors feel that way. And at the same time, from my projections, we need, by year's end, 100 ambassadors mm -hmm. to, to handle everything. Mm -hmm. So we need to bring them in. So I would say figure out what's fair to pay a trainee or whatever you call it, a scribbler if you're Kenichi. Um, or I, I think Rojo has a title for the newbies coming into their work group. Mm -hmm. Um and and figure out what's fair and and what's ethical and what's you know what the market is. I mean, this uh, is and, really good food for thought. And I'm just thinking, you know, maybe we like the core group just needs to have a chat about that or something. Or maybe I'll just bring it to the you know come to the meeting and see what's said. But it feels like it's twenty five to now, and we'd like to give TiVo a chance to show the Miro integration with chat. GTP. Okay, my apologies. For... No, 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 no. I didn't mean that. I just meant I, I'm not going to answer those questions here because I think you've raised some really important food for thought, and I thank you for it. And yeah, it would be really important. I think if we want to onboard people to archives, we've got to offer them something. We can't just go, oh, come and do it for the love of it, can we? So yeah. What meeting again was it, Tommy? Sorry, I'm. Um, it, it'll go it'll be strategy it'll start incubation will probably have a segue of some sort but it's it's going to be strategy I, I briefly introduced it last week after the spam attack okay <laughs> over to Tivo then I suppose so. yeah I would actually even add to what Tommy mentioned because it touches very close to what I have been basically doing past I know four five months because it's always been a bit of confusing here like uh, in, in regards of like people wanting to get stuff done but having the time to actually do it so even right now i would say that like these what you're bringing here people want to get them done but they don't necessarily want to be the ones doing it and 
these meetings you're having, I, I also kind of joined in, in, in a way not to do the archival, but kind of see how it's done and how from what I'm doing, how could I help to, to kind of alleviate or kind of like make it easier for this group. And and yeah, like one thing also what has happened, like when strategy guild and marketing guild popped up, they they, they were in, in a perfect timing to not find a, a line with my schedule. And then later I also realized like when creating new work, it's just, it, you simply don't have time because I have more and more learned that when I prepare for a meeting, people actually put more like quality into the discussions compared to just, okay, here is a meeting time. But the, what that has meant is that now when I have eight hours of meetings, actually I have eight hours of preparing time. And now this summary thing is technically helping to kind of construct the, the bigger like meaning of what we are doing here. And so, but that's another like one hour. So it's like tripled my time just to do a one meeting. And now when things pop up from there, it usually takes like two, two to four hours to like complete an action. Depends on how small they are. Like if, because we have seen like a way to kind of and tested out like 30 minutes or like 60 minute tasks and kind of feel like what could they be. But still it's like hard to uh, participate. And I would rather actually have a video and simply do an exercise, which is, yeah, for example, you said like, okay, like $10, but the actual time to do it maybe takes like 50 minutes, but the first time it takes more because you're looking like a 50 to 30 minute video to explain why, what is being done in that 50 minutes. Yeah, just. Uh, <laughs> no, it's really interesting, Tivo. It's, um... I mean, I think as Tommy and Vanessa are saying, it's this. This requires. We, we, it seems like we've learned. The, we're learning some lessons. Maybe uh, the meeting culture's changing a little bit. Um, maybe there's too many meetings, or we need to focus more on in different ways. So I think it's, um, and also experiment with um, how to incentivize and reward people. Yeah, it's all good. Well, we're learning a lot, and and as Tivo adroitly points out, is you know just to participate in a meeting takes no effort. You show up. Uh, some people don't even ever talk; they just sit in the background. They don't participate. To facilitate to run a meeting to do takes an awful lot of prep time. If you're good, you can wing it on five minutes, or you can be professional with a half hour or whatever that prep time is, but it does take the prep time. And and that's why I was trying to, to get Vanessa to head it up, but to, to train facilitators why you need an agenda. It, it's to hold your feet and to organize and, and structure thinking, uh, both for you and, and for the group. So Tivo, you're, you're right on. If you're doing eight hours of meeting, you probably have eight, uh, four and a half to eight hours of prep time. And it's it's a lot. It's a it's a heavy kidney drain. And this is also why you don't see that many treasury updates, even though I <laughs> wanted to bring you tokenomics governance. I don't want to, but are you gonna share your screen, Tivo, on the <laughs> on the mirror board? Thanks. So. Right. Uh, so previously we discussed like that chat GPT when we kept it there or well, not I'm not sure is it chat GPT but basically if you have registered yourself as a beta um, AI user and you have a license then you have this like a blue icon and when you click summarize it will summarize this this section and what it gave was discussions on opt-out options ambassador program engineers internal education and culture balance, data accessibility, budget proposals, and treasury management. So it just puts a bunch of names into this summary, but technically it's still like okay summary if it would be like a slogan or something else, because it captures 
what we discuss in dredge recording in general. But if we go into like smaller segues, like here is a topic of community member tooling costs, and there are like three action items. If I zoomarize this, let's see what it gives. Go to results. Consider using home domain or Google Workspace emails, explore alternative email tools, use Google Form to track tooling costs and Proton mail for privacy. <laughs> okay, that's a made up stuff. Um, David may have a list of subscriptions, community members tooling costs should be included in the list. So like one sentence in that summary was like, what the hell is happening? So it kind of does summaries, but I'm I mean, I'm not sure like is it, if you're a facilitator, you probably will do a better summary on your own. Uh, cluster by keywords, I have no clue what does that do. Oh, actually that's cool. And uh, these are the new things. So we may start to do some ideation and try to cluster them and see what happens. Let's see if I cluster the process squealed stuff, what it says. Uh, attack workgroups, PBL, meta structures, process troll attacks. <laughs> okay. Ambassador build swarm. Uh, ambassadors live vote voting mechanism so i'm not sure it seems also a bit too random for like a already organized items in somewhat and yeah cluster by sentiment let's see what does that mean. positive what the alternative emails neutral negative need it's too negative, you need stuff, you don't need stuff. Okay, so AI tools. Um, yeah, any questions or the kind of learnings from this? But I do like if, if you stick one sticky note, you can create similar sticky notes. So that is maybe useful at some point. Yeah, I think you should experiment with it, Tivo. That the 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 problem is it's a bit like a LLMs in general, like the Reed AI stuff. It's like it's not useful enough. It's quite frustrating. It's like sometimes you use it and it might be useful for keyword generation to tag something, <clears throat> to experiment with summaries. But often it's not, as you've seen here, it doesn't really give a reliable summary. It's that needs a human at the moment. Um, so it's it's tricky. Uh, but I, I don't think, I think we should, you know, after all, we're singularity net, and we, we need to use AI tools. So it's more <clears throat> experimentation, I think, rather than just use. Yeah, I feel like we have got other ways to get a really quick, neat little summary, and we're all doing that. So maybe it's less important that it's not a perfect summary and more important that we're trying to use a tool. I don't know what people think about that. I, I, I agree with that. I think the effort of using and learning and adapting and evolving. Does anybody know what Zarka actually is? Can you post it? Post a link, Tommy. I I don't have a link. It's it's something they're talking about in Singularity Net using Zarka, and I think it's the replacement of their initial AI protocol. But I I don't actually know that there's a protocol or a link, or it's just a project they're talking about. Because they are talking about their own. LNM, is that right? Is that uh, there, okay, so there is a Zarka. Okay, I had not found it. It is a language model, yeah. Okay, that's why I thought, yeah. Well, that's interesting. I haven't really, I, I was aware of the headline, but I'm not aware of the detail. Has it been released? Or...
I, I suppose, I mean, Tommy, it's going to be a bit like uh, the Sophia verse as well, because I think um, they did say in the white paper that the Sophia verse is going to use uh, an adapted LNM as well. So that could be another use case for any work group, I, I suppose. Yeah. If I remember correctly, then actually this Sarka may be next year thing. Oh, so it's it's not out because I was wondering if, as uh, Vanny said, uh, you know, using it is is part of the battle. If we could actually put it to use in the SNET, I think the best option for that, Tommy, is probably going to be Sophia verse in the short term. Probably they ha they have the models and they're going to use it for Sophia verse and and for the other thing that uh, been. Thing. <laughs> I'm actually, there's something I wanted to mention. I mean, Andre, if you, um, I'm not sure how aware you are of Sophia Verse. Um, no. Yeah. It was announced, um, well, it was an introduction presentation done yesterday at Town Hall for Ambassadors. Um, and they've produced a white paper. But the reason why I thought it might interest you is that they're going to open source it. And they're going to release the open source repositories soonish. I'm not sure exactly when, maybe a month or so, maybe two months. Uh, and it will include, I think it's going to include LLM technology. So if they open source that, maybe there'll be development opportunities. That's what I'm thinking, Andre. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I'm looking at the channel now, so I'll definitely follow this. Yeah. I see there's a website as well. If, if I could just steal two minutes of your meeting, um, I don't really know Andre that well. I, I was wondering what your strengths are, Andre. Uh, I'm, I'm still newish to coding, so I'm learning to code. And that's that's where I want to focus my work on. But uh, yeah, it's mainly JavaScript now. But um, gonna start looking into AI. But uh, I'm mostly involved with Devo in Treasury Guild, Devo and Felix and Miroslav. So building a treasury system that works alongside Devo system. That's where I do most of my work. Thank you. And I think like, I, mean, I think Andre has been a bit modest as well. I mean, you, you kind of like help build, well, you built the, the dashboard for a lot of stuff with you, Andre. So, <laughs> and also, also work yeah. a lot with a lot, lot with APIs, um, and a lot of it is like like everyone in this community is like learning by doing. So we're all learning by doing, um, and it's also uh, you know synthesizing like so learning from each other. Um, so that's why we mentioned earlier about like because uh, like for example, Felix is working with Mesh, uh, and, and so it's about what can we learn with each other to, you know, to uh, help with the ambassadors program or you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah, that's uh, that's another thing. Also, we, um, like you mentioned, we learn learn from each other. Um, I've also I've learned like a couple of things from Paul and from Randall, uh, and even Devo. I mean, you, know, you learn from almost everyone. Well, no, don't learn coding from me. Bugs every day. <laughs> no, no, but uh, I think I learned some data structure ideas from you in some of those calls with Randall. 
So. I mean, it's tricky because uh, a lot of us are multi-skilled, but it's a question of priorities, you know, like I can develop, I can develop in Python and so on, but I just don't use that hardly at all because um, I spend all my time building it, building documentation infrastructure. <laughs> Yeah, it's these meetings, man. You mentioned you all mentioned it. This this lots of meetings. And I like us. meetings where we work or everybody creates sticky notes. <laughs> <laughs> Just finishing up a meeting summary for the ambassador work group. Um This is what I do. Next second steps gonna be remain the same. Now I go to Discord. Should I also take it to the Bitbook? Um, I'm not sure if we have time, Vanessa. I mean, we've only got 10 minutes, but also I just wanted to add when we were doing that live, we missed off a really important part of that task, which is to then go back into Gitbook and say it's archived here's the link to it oh, which I just yeah, did. yeah yeah so yeah. just just in case anybody's watching the video unlikely I know and wants to know what the whole process is so that's where we're at at the moment and I also noted that we added the slides because I think in the thinking that I was doing about a workflow we need to say if we do add something that wasn't in the original so yeah I think that's really important because what we've been doing in the meeting summary channel whoever posts in there to give some feedback we say we usually put i, I put an icon under the post and then a reply as vanessa's done there to say it's been archived um, so then th then it feels like you know it hasn't just been ignored it's been it's been archived and there's a record of what had been archived and what hasn't that kind of thing But maybe we could um, return to this in our next fortnightly meeting. Yeah, and like I don't know, Tivo, were you saying that you wanted to add it to the Git book outside of the meeting, or do it now, or or what? Because I mean, you could do. We've got ten minutes. Well, six minutes, if you want to. We'll do it now. But another thing, perhaps, what would have been maybe easier is how could I best because like. You say like creating a frame and exporting it out. This mm -hmm. is time it takes me to do that. Yeah. Now, if this is a file on my desktop, yeah. I, now the question is, where do I move it? I was In thinking. The get book, yeah. I was thinking what you could do. The fastest thing is to what you for me to put it here, but uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That would be fine. Yeah, that would be, and also. We don't just have that image. We also have a high. Haven't you been taking high res? Uh, what I do is take. Um, yeah, I took the high res version. I take the high res image, but I also save a PDF of the vector as well. Uh, so, so what I, on, so both files you want? Yeah. Why? Why are we doing both? Stephen, because it's, it's the way it displays in Gitbook. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, the okay. image displays as an image, so you can see it, and the PDF it allows you to zoom in. Yeah, so if you click on the frame, Tivo, and then, yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, and then the last option, the vector, the vector one. But this is a PDF file, so only fine file. You said yeah, two files. So you, yeah. So you, what I've been doing is a large file on JPEG and a vector file. Okay. So I, I, I did the better last time. The reason why I choose the large file because on the Git book it enlarges it. It's, it's just the most. So, and the reason why I have a PDF is because for some frames you got you can't see what's going on without zooming in. Yeah. Now, if you go to Discord. 
to have adequate copy image or like Let's have a download look. options? I right, let me have a look. Um... If you just posted that, it's, oh yeah, okay. Um, and yeah. what somebody mentioned, what yeah. does Andre do? If he is very bored, he could actually do a Discord bot that takes that image automatically and posts it into Git book page. <laughs> if the bot is listening. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Yeah. Uh, one day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, that would be great though, Tivo, to if for every meeting summary you could just do that because it's what you just do, did then takes me about 15 minutes on my computer okay and yeah, i'm gonna take a night of that and the you reason is the work tasks and give like one or two ajax per <laughs> meeting from an, uh, our, like history and maybe sit down in one sunday and just going to kind of crunch down the numbers yeah I, what what if you can do this do it do what you just did there from now on i can then work on the backlog if you're up for that yep that's okay i may forgot sometimes i guess but <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll remind you <laughs> I think we're near the end of the meeting now, aren't we? Yeah. All right, you reminded me. Process model and worker. Let's yeah. go. Next meeting yes. starts in two minutes. And okay, shall shall I close the meeting, Vanessa? Or yeah, close it. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, everyone, uh, for this session, and I'm going to stop recording. <laughs>